back. My name is Bernie Gator and it looks as if it's Mr. Smith. Welcome to our YouTube channel that we lately renamed into Whiskey Reisen, which translates to Whiskey Journeys. And man, what a bad timing to do so, because traveling at the moment really does suck. So what the... Welcome. True that. Welcome. Welcome and thank you for your patience. I will say a few words about the delay a little bit later, but right now let's get into our long promised three in a row extended version episode number three with a bottle that Mr. Smith brought along from the Isle of Isla that contains whiskey filled from an independent bottler from the famous distillery of Lafroig. So with no further ado, three in a row, Let's go! Lafroig is Gaelic and means the beautiful hollow by the broad bay. And indeed, the distillery lies beautifully situated on the south coast of the Isle of Isla, right there on a the beautiful, you guessed it, broad bay. The distillery looks back onto more than 200 years of history, very successful ones as well as tough times. Through one of those difficult ones, the years of war and then until 1972, the distillery was run by a woman named Bessie Williamson. So much for whiskey and especially Lafroig being a man-only drink. But still, opinions tend to differ even among friends of peated whiskey when it comes to Lafroig. You love or hate it. You shower it with prizes like the IWSC, International Wine and Spirit Competition did, or compare it to a fresh tarmac after summer rain with a hint of melted rubber boots. Lafroig polarizes. But what is it that makes a Lafroig into a Lafroig? What distinguishes it from, let's say, other Isla whiskies? Let's again have a closer look onto the four impact compounds responsible for a whiskey's outcome. Malting, fermentation, distillation and cask maturation. Lafroig is one amongst a handful of distilleries left to do their own malting. Even though 80% of their malt comes ready to use from Port Allen maltings just around the corner. But the other 20% are being spread all across their on-site malting floors and watered for about two days so the seeds begin to germinate, which then is being stopped by drying them. And that drying process has one unique feature. They first use peat fire on the wet corn before they dry it with hot air, which in that order is unusual and in my humble opinion, <laughs> probably is one of the main influences on the very Lafroig specific smoke flavor. After that, the malt is being pumped into the mash tun along with the other malt in order to extract the sugars. In fermentation, the metabolic functions of living microorganisms are utilized. In other words, yeast is added and that eats sugar and crap excretes alcohol. 48 hours down the road of this process, usually all the off flavors are gone and ester molecules start to form that later would be perceived as fruity flavors such as cherry, pineapple or pear, which Lafroig tries to prevent from happening by all means necessary. Which is why they pull the plug after roughly 50 hours, which is surprisingly short if we recall Bruchladi in vlog number 22 where fermentation lasts for up to 105 hours. Distillation itself holds another surprise. Three wash and four spirit stills lead to an uneven number, and that's something you don't see every day. One of the spirit stills is twice as big as its three siblings, a fact that former mentioned Bessie Williamson unsuccessfully tried to prevent with all of her heart. The need for economy led to buying a huge single still 
instead of two equally sized smaller ones. And longtime Lafroig fans take oath on that the whiskey never had been the same ever since. The heavy reduction, the flat bottom and the ascending line arms maximize reflux and probably would lead to a fruity spirit if Lafroig would not take care of that by the longest foreshot run in the entire whiskey industry. 45 minutes before they turn the valve to collect the middle cut that later ends up being filled into the casks after being watered down to the 63.5% alcohol industry standard. One would expect it to be a very dry whiskey now, but if you ever have tasted Lafroig, you know about its sweetness that alongside with the smoky flavor defines its taste. And this sweetness entirely comes from the wood of the cask. They almost exclusively use ex-bourbon casks made by Marker's Mark, who since Jim Beam's takeover by the Japanese Megatrust Suntory, is a sister distillery, so to say, such as Knob Creek, Yamazaki, Canadian Club or Beaumore. Lafroig, by the way, is the only whiskey to carry the royal warrant of the Prince of Wales, who still holds the title the Lord of the Isles, Prince Charles who is being identified by his title Duke of Rothay, as he is recognized in Scotland. And I too rate this whisky as being royal. PX Cask and at least one more Lafroig have been permanent residents in my house for many years now. Whiskey from an independent bottler, made by the famous Isla distillery Lafroig. In this case, it comes out of a refill sherry hogshead cask, is aged 6 years, is bottle number 132 out of 337 and has an alcohol percentage of 58.7, so it's cask strength actually and was bottled by the so-called Creative Whiskey Company. Which was founded in 2005 by David Sturck and all of their products are unchilled filtered and have no additional coloring added. And it's a pretty classy one for a six-year-old. I'd say so too, man. So while we are having another sip, I'll take you along on the promised production day at the Whiskey Beer and Gin Academy whose founder, Andreas Heiss, has become a friend of ours over the years. I met him a couple of years ago on a masterclass whiskey tasting that Mr. Smith dragged me along. And we invited him back on our Scotland premiere and then on our Ireland premiere. And so over the years this kind of geeky whiskey business kind of friendship evolved. And at the moment I'm working on a couple of image movies for him with a little help from my friend Mr. Smith. And how that goes is part of the next clip, so enjoy while we enjoy our whiskey. Slanjiva man. Good morning. It's shortly before 7 o'clock a.m. And I am on my way to a small town called Phil's that you guys would pronounce as Phil's, which is total crap because it's pronounced Phil's. And I'm going to meet up with my buddy Andy Heiss, who happens to be an engineer for brewing and beverage technology and runs a company called the Enjoyment Academy, where you can take classes and learn how to distill your own gin 
rum, or even whiskey, or book tastings for all those beverages. And for those courses he needs a couple of image videos that I am supposed to do, which I'm very grateful for. So I am going to take a couple of drone shots of the building in the first light of day, which does not look as promising as I hoped it would, because it's pretty cloudy. And then I need to take a couple of shots inside, filming and photography, so I thought, why not bring you guys along? Ready? Go! So in the meanwhile, a couple of sun rays are coming through, so I got to hurry up. I've been already here flying with my drone in winter time, but first of all I need summer shots anyways. And second of all I changed my drone. Last time I was here with my Mavic Air that I wasn't quite happy with. And this time I brought my new one, the Mavic 2 Pro. In the meanwhile, the Mavic Air 2 came out with sensational specs, but I'm still gonna stick with my Mavic 2 Pro. So, let's see what it can do, alright? went better than expected. Sun is out. It's beautiful. I hope there were a couple of good shots. You've already seen them. I didn't. But now I guess it's time for coffee so I gotta go inside and ask Andy if he might have one for me. So this here, this is the badass tasting room with the wall of whiskey in the background. And I blend in here so perfectly that if I get closer to the wall of whiskey, I disappear. I'll show you. See? On to the next room. And this? This is the heart and soul of the academy. There's a lot of sniffing and cutting and tasting and distilling and malting going on in here. Because this is where all the classes take place. And I was already here with my camera to film those. And Mr. Smith came along with the microphone to record all the steaming and bubbling and firing. So what's left to do is to take a couple of pictures and while I do that I show you what I got so far. All right.
In the meanwhile, most of the class videos are finished and so is the image movie. I will put the link underneath this video. Check it out. I'm really proud of how this one came out. During the last couple of months, a hurricane was raging through my private life, which is going to challenge me for some time to come, I'm afraid, and didn't leave a lot of time and even energy for making the last two episodes and especially this one. I tell you this because this YouTube channel is really important to me and it's kind of a creative outlet, so to say, for me and I intend to keep it running for many years to come. I just can't run it like YouTube wants me to, pushing out at least one video a week, which is why they punish us with not featuring or showing us anywhere. It's still really hard to find us, but there are awesome people like you guys who did find us and who did recommend us, and this is why we got close to 400 subscribers so far and all in all 25,000 views and I want to thank you for that. That means the world to me and gives me a lot of strength to continue. Thank you for all the lovely comments, I really enjoy those. Unfortunately, all my answers were erased during the renaming process of this channel. So it's time to talk again. Let's get back into our little powwow, leave me a comment, I will answer it. Thank you to those who leave their subscription open, even if nothing's going on for a while. There will be a next video, unless I tell you differently on this channel. And I got a lot in pipeline, actually. As soon as traveling will be possible again. Mr. Smith and I are going to Scotland, obviously. That's why we're called Whiskey Journeys. In the meanwhile, I got myself a new car that I will turn into a video mobile. We always wanted to go to the distillery Finch in Germany, that should be possible. I got a lot of technical schmabu in my studio that I'm going to show you. And there will be a new segment, like three in a row, with the Whiskey, Gin and Beer Academy, where Mr. Smith and I are going back to Academy and get information about the technical and physical and chemical side of whiskey distillation and maybe even distill our own whiskey. So this might be a good time to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. This ends the probably longest vlog I ever did on YouTube. Thanks to especially you, the probably only viewer who is still watching after 20 minutes. Stay healthy. Please recommend our channel as I recommend myself as your Bernie Gator. See ya. We need your help so our channel can keep growing. Maybe you know someone interested in all things whiskey that you can recommend us to. Check out our playlist, Vlogs in English. Each click and every minute playtime does help. And we do enjoy each and every comment, so please feel free. Please take the chance to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell, so you will be notified whenever something's going on. It's all free. Thank you.